When it comes to balancing a heating system, what's your weapon of choice? Do you go for one of the more technologically advanced options, digital thermometers and infrared thermal imaging cameras? Do you go a bit more old school with the touch of a finger? Or maybe you use a really good tried and tested method of pipe clamp thermometers to get the right delta T for the radiator. So if you find chat about heating systems or DIY approaches helpful or interesting, make sure you subscribe for further content like this. The way that I believe is the way to go is using actual air temperature sensors in each room to balance your heating system to perfection. Now I've been experimenting with this for some time and last year I had a few hiccups along the way and one of my commenters, I wish I could go back and find your name, you pointed out that not all of these will read exactly the same even if they are from the same manufacturer. So Temtop sent me these devices and what I turned them on and what I did before moving them or touching them or anything, I left them all on my desk right next to each other for two hours and all four of these devices recorded and reported the exact same temperature. So then I set about putting them in my four rooms and I left them for a few days to let them do their job and then I found a little bit of disparity and I've been fiddling away with lock shields to try and get the downstairs of my house absolutely balanced. And this is how it's shaking out for me so far. So our desired temperature, 21 degrees. You can see the actual room temperature, 20.5 degrees. Now, Temtop is telling me 20.7 degrees. Kitchen area, 20.7 degrees. Hallway area, 20.8 degrees. And the room that gets all the solar gain all day, 21.5 degrees. So there you can see the results are very good small room for improvement possibly but there's so many variables you're always going to be maybe half a degree up or down depending on other factors and human bodies and other solar gain and everything else so temtop sent me three of these these are the t1 se comes with a little self-adhesive magnet that you can just stick on the wall and then that just pops on and then this can just stick on the wall and uh, these also have a little kickstand, so you can just rest them. And of course, it's a clock. It gives you the temperature, it gives you the humidity, and you have a little uh, indicator there. So the green is in the comfort zone at the moment. I'm holding it and breathing on it, and it's saying 67% humidity. So these are simple, lightweight, and appear to be very accurate temperature and humidity sensor devices and relatively cheap as well. Now this one from Temtop is their M10 Plus. This is a little bit of a different device. This one is USB-C rechargeable. It's got one of those weird like e-ink displays, you know, like a Kindle device or something. And this one, in addition to the temperature and the humidity, also reports on PM 2.5 and uh, AQI, which other ones, the CO2 parts per million and uh, VOCs as well. So you can see at the moment, we're in the green for all of those. And uh, that's been interesting as well because that's not something that I've actually measured in this home. This one has a straightforward app that you connect to by Bluetooth and it does log all of the data. So you can look back historic at the uh, temperature ranges throughout the day. What I really wish, which I didn't understand when Temtop was sending me this. Um, I thought that these were kind of like satellite sensors. They would all report back to the M10 Plus, and then I would have historic data for each of the individual rooms. That would be a dream, really. Um, and of course, they've sent me like a little starter kit. This is enough for me to do the downstairs of my house. Now that I've got the downstairs of the house perfectly balanced, I'm gonna move all of these sensors upstairs into the four bedrooms, one sensor in each bedroom, and then I'm gonna try and balance those so that they are perfect as well. And I know that the difficult thing with balancing the heating system is you turn one lock shield, just the absolute smidgen of a turn, and that then, if you open more flow to one radiator, that means less flow is going to another radiator. And so you feel like you're constantly chasing your tail 
really the ideal thing would be to have 10 of these all around the house and to leave it for a few weeks and just a couple of tweaks here or there. So hopefully you saw it in my previous video when I walked around with this, turn the heating system on. As I turned the radiator on in the garage and opened that lock shield right up, I really threw off the balance of the rest of the system. I had to crank the lock shield right down on the garage radiator to try and help some of the further radiators in the system get that flow that they needed. Now I'm happy to say as well, uh, one huge benefit from having a heat pump as your heat source is because of the lower flow temperature and running it for a very extended periods of time, it seems to almost self-balance somewhat to, to a degree. Um, if you are running a high temperature heating system with a higher flow temperature and running it for shorter durations, then the balance of the system is gonna be a lot more critical, I think. We also tend to leave pretty much all of our doors wide open so that the air can transfer before the between the rooms. Despite that, we did see before balancing over a degree between various rooms. And so I still think balancing is worth a little bit of time and effort. And if you set these up in rooms, you can just tweak it for a minute a day and then leave it for another 24 hours and slowly you can bring it into the correct range. And then you may want to adjust for other things. I think I'm going to knock back uh, the heating in our kitchen area because as soon as we do any cooking or anything in there, that immediately rises the temperature right up. So that has been uh, a great thing with a device like this that does temperature logging. Uh, I can pop this in the kitchen and then I can see that rise from about 5 p.m up to about 6 p.m. and then I can see the decay as it slowly comes back down. And so that does tell me that I could probably restrict the flow and just crack those lock shields down just a smidgen, just a tiny, tiny bit. That's the one thing I've learned as a layman uh, of balancing my own home system, a DIY approach that I've done at this house and my previous home with gas boilers previously as well is a tiny turn can go a very long way when it comes to balancing a system. And I've always started with the approach of having them cranked all the way shut and then just opening them a smidgen. Um, I'm not sure if that's the best way to go with a heat pump. And so um, actually as the system was left with me, it was pretty much in the ballpark and I've only adjusted them up or down a little bit, haven't completely cranked them closed. Perhaps because flow is good for heat pumps, perhaps you want to start with them wide open. I don't know. I'd love to hear from the professionals that actually know better about this stuff and that have real world experience of doing this day to day. What's your method? What do you swear by? The reason I say that um, the, the pipe clamp thermometers are perhaps not the best option is when you are designing the heat system, you're designing for a heat loss of a given room. And that heat loss is based on many assumptions. And of course, those assumptions may be proved to be accurate or inaccurate. And also, if you calculate this space, for example, this could be calculated at 924 watts of heat loss, for example. And then the radiators that we can choose they could be 850 watts or they could be 990 watts. And we may not be able to match perfectly the heat loss of this space with the radio radiator that we have to install. And so balancing can bridge that gap. It can bridge the gap of assumptions made in heat loss and it can bridge the gap of having to install a radiator that is not perfectly sized for the heat loss. So I hope some of my musings and some of my thoughts have been helpful to you. Of course, if you find these devices useful or intriguing, there will be a there will be an affiliate link down in the description. So you could go ahead and buy these if you're going to find them helpful. Now that we don't have a gas cooker or a gas boiler, a lot of these emission related things, not so critical anymore. And it's easy to stay in the green surprising if you do pop one of these in a kitchen with a gas cooker or you pop this um, near a gas boiler sometimes some of these readings can shoot to the moon so if you find chat about heating systems or diy approaches 
helpful or interesting, make sure you subscribe for further content like this. Thank you as always for watching.